Just a short while ago, I published a video review and demonstration of Topaz Sharpen AI, and it's quite clear in this video that I'm a strong advocate for this amazing, intuitive, press one button sharpening tool. Since downloading the full Topaz suite of apps, I've been able to dig out my old, nearly there shots that I concerned were not fully recoverable. And to be honest, they were pretty much unusable. Topaz Sharpen AI, Topaz Denoise AI, and Topaz Gigapixel AI have allowed me to enlarge, recover details, sharpen and remove noise from these imperfect images. Now, I've just received a software update for my Topaz Sharpen app, and I'm so impressed at the new features that I'm going to share with you today just how much this update has improved the app, with even better features, new features, better sharpening. So prepare to be impressed as I take a previously discarded image and turn it into a fully usable shot using Topaz Sharpen AI. Hi, I'm Ken Hatfield. Welcome to my Better Photography channel. Firstly, I'd like to make it clear that I have no association with Topaz whatsoever. I'm not being paid for this recommendation and I have no associate links that give me a commission for encouraging new buyers. I'm simply just blown away at these amazing tools that have made a big change to my photo processing. So, that being said, I'm going to open up one of my images that I almost deleted because I just thought it could never be recovered. This is going to be a huge challenge to any sharpening tool. So, let's see how Topaz handles a very blurry image. Okay, so I've already got the image open up in Photoshop and I think you can clearly see there that it's pretty much unusable. I mean, I almost ditched it altogether, but I'm a bit of a hoarder. So I kind of hang on to things and hope that technology catches up. And on this occasion, uh, it appears to work in my favour. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up the Topaz Sharpen. And this is the brand new version, it's just been updated. It's uh, version 4.1. And this will bring the image straight in and then we'll attempt to process the image immediately. Now, first of all, the interface is very much the same as the previous one, but there's some additional features. They now have 10 of these sharpened models, which are excellent. So there are various solutions you could work out by uh, the speed of your camera, whether it's just uh, motion blur or find out whether it's a focusing problem. Most people can make a, a guess at that, but for those who can't, up at the top here, we've got some features here. The first one is a single view, so that's showing you as it is. Now, is, if you look down in the bottom corner, here it's done a motion blur normal which is then highlighted up here as well so that's the effect that it's chosen to start with not very successful so what you need to do out of these 10 particular sharpen models you need to find the one that's the most effective and uh, the easiest way to do that is to come up to this button here which is the comparison view now the comparison view actually gives you four out of these 10 selected sharpen models to view immediately as you can see they're all rendering you'll see the the green line come across as they're rendering it'll tell you when they're, when they're done and the, the, they will render all four now obviously there's 10 sharpened models so what you need to do if you want to look at a, another model if you're nothing on the screen that you like at the moment uh, you look for the one that you, you like the least which is probably this one here the motion blur normal and then you click on that to highlight it'll come up blue it'll come up blue there then you look for one of these sharpened models that you haven't already used on the screen so we haven't used uh, too soft very noisy there so we'll click on that and that will then replace this bottom one with that particular sharpened model and you'll be able to compare that now already the thing that's caught my eye is the top right here out of focus very blurry and you can see what it's done it's quite amazing where has it found that detail from the original shot however what you need to do now is if you want to select that one make sure it's highlighted and selected in blue then go back to the single view it'll then bring it in as a single view. Down here, we've got the model parameters. Now, the fact that this box here is checked means that the program is actually selecting what it thinks are the best parameters for this particular setting. You can, however, then remove these uh, sliders for your own kind of interpretation of how you want the image to look. I'm quite happy with it as it is, so I'm gonna leave it just where it is. 
Next, with an image like this, what you don't want to be doing if you've got a lovely background is you don't want to be actually sharpening the background. So what we need to do is to put some kind of mask on. And this is another feature that has improved dramatically, and that is the mask feature. So you try and select. And uh, what we have here is a mask that will come up and the details will come up below there and you can see where it's masked and it's picked the subject and the little post below as well. And this is how clever this is. There's several selections here. I'm on auto subjects at the moment and auto people and portraits. So if you check this out, if you look on the bottom mask here, you'll see it's selected on the top one, this auto subject, it's selected the bird and the post. So I'm going to tell it people portraits. And amazingly, it recognises that the post is not a person or an object that uh, you want in the mask. So it's taken it out. I find that astonishing, basically. The next one is for skyline landscapes. Obviously, this is not a landscape, but what this does is obviously separates the sky from the land. Then there's a custom one where you're able to make your own mask. But I'm more than happy with the mask it's supplied there. So we can then refine the mask. So if we go into the refine button there, and as you can see, it's done a pretty good job of the bird all around. And what we can then do is have a look further down here and see what it's done further down. Now it's not quite so good on the bit of wood there. So we have the brush tool here. So what we have here is an add and subtract. Couldn't be more simple. The size here is the size of the brush. And you're going to make the brush larger or smaller, whichever you prefer. This next one is the opacity. So that will give you the opacity of the brush strokes. An edge aware tool, which is vital nowadays for this type of thing. And what this does is you'll see the center there. That's the area that's going to take away or add to the mask. And the outer area there is actually where it's going to sample the edge of the image, find the edge, and then hopefully make a selection and stop you going over the edge. So I'll give you an idea how that works. So if I just go across to the little piece of wood here, and then I just place the edge of the brush, the outer part will be selecting the outside of the image, and you can then prevent you from going over. If it does go over in a place that you're not very happy with, you just go to subtract, I've just got that little bit in the corner. I'll make that a little smaller. And you can see, you can just refine the edge of the mask as much as you like. I'm quite happy with that. So what we'll then do is we've got a, a nice mask there. Now what's going to happen there, it will only apply sharpening to the red area. You can, if you've got a different image that you, you want to have a, a different effect, you, you can invert the mask, which will uh, sharpen the background and not the bird. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but it's a simple task just to hit the invert button and it will invert the mask. So then all you need to do then is actually update the image. And then up here, if you look here, that's a single view. That's a split view. And that shows you the before, there's the before, there's the after. That's pretty, pretty impressive. You then have the side-by-side -side view, and that gives you a comparison view of the two. And we've already looked at the, the four uh, comparison views that you've got there. Really, really an amazing, amazing update. Even better than it was before. And I would strongly recommend it. You at least try it out and see what it does to the images that you're not particularly happy with. Uh, incidentally, it is re-rendering there. Again, another thing I say about this program is it can take a little while to re-render. You see there, it's come up fully rendered there and it's updated quickly. And that's the finished image there. Pretty impressive. So there you go. If Topaz can recover that amount of blurring, just imagine how it will improve images that just need a little touch of sharpness. Remember, it's free to download and you can try it for two weeks with no risk. For those just starting out on their photography journey, it's likely you may occasionally get your settings wrong or misjudge your exposure. Topaz gives you an option to recover your mistakes and provide you with good, usable images to be proud of. So go check it out. See you next time on the Better Photography Channel.